What's going on, everybody? Bobby Fi with my man, Jake Brody. We are going to be talking through the, this uh, week four NFL slate and ready to get things cooking outside of showdown. I've been I've done well in showdowns all year. Haven't had a good first three weeks. Haven't had a terrible first for three weeks. Just just had some, you know, near misses. Um, I'm very heavily concentrated this week, Brody, and I'm curious to think I'm really only interested and I don't want to get overly spread out when I don't have to. I, I've, I've liked like eight games like every week so far. And I have three games, and most of it's going to come from two games that I have on this entire slate. Um, so before we get into positions, I guess we can do it at the end too. But like, I'm just going to say Miami, Buffalo, Vegas, and the Chargers, Denver, Chicago. That's where my money is going to be spent this week. Um, do you have do you have do you have what those, or do you want to start off with QBs and then we'll we'll, we'll do it at the end? Um, did you say the Chargers game on there? Yeah, that was okay. my second. Yeah, I, I missed you hearing that. Yeah, I mean. Really, I've been concentrating on these high-scoring games. I'm getting a lot of the right pieces lately, but I'm just, I'm just missing a few things here and there. So we've had a few close weeks, and I'm just really ready to build a full lineup of all elite talent, 40-plus guys. I've had the Hill and Allen and most certain lineups, and then I got dud players in there, you know, with right. them. You know? So it's like, wow, you know, people had good lineups with the Jags, and like a couple of Jags got there, and then Kirk ended up getting me 15 late, but, I mean, you needed, like, a high score last week to compete. Yeah, so. Last week was crazy high score. So, yeah, if you were just missing one or two of those good players, even though I had Herbert, Allen, Hill in a lineup with Mostart, you know, I had a three-point dud, or I had a wrong other player somewhere, I, you know, I still made money. I still had some high cashes, but you needed a few more pieces, so. Yeah, yeah, those are the games I like. If you want to start with QB, let's get it. All right, let's do it. All right, so for me, the QBs are pretty pretty simple. Um, from what I'm what I'm doing, um, I am going to. I mean, look, I'm going to mix in some other things, but I'm not. My it's going to be Josh Allen, Tua, Justin Fields, as gross as it feels, Russell Wilson, and Herbert. Um, just the just out of the games that I mentioned. Because I don't have more out there that I love, I will probably play some game stacks and then use like a skinny stack, Anthony Richardson, if he plays, or Jalen Hurts. But mostly that's going to be it for me. I, I want to focus in on those those five uh, from the games that I like, uh, both sides of the Buffalo-Miami, uh, Herbert, and then both sides of Denver-Chicago is what I want to do. Uh, two, two, you know, two defenses that have been terrible. Uh, we'll see what happens in that Denver-Chicago game. But I, I sort of like that as my... That, that, that was not, I don't know if sneaky is the right word, but I think it is sneaky because I don't think anyone wants to play these teams. Um, so those are my, those are my favorites right there. How about you? Yeah. I mean, I don't have any sneaky stuff yet. Um, I'm going to dig into the slate a little bit more, but I mean, I like we got the projections up here, guys. Also, don't forget to like, and subscribe on the video. As always, we got some really good packages up on true DFS. You guys get these. We got Goldie's aggregate projections. We got our sheets projection. You can see the differences here. Then I like to, I like to usually sort by Goldie's kind of balance them out a little bit. That's how I get mine. But yeah, quarterbacks a little priced up this week a little bit because we got Herbert priced up, we got Allen and Hurts priced up. These guys are elite. A lot of good matchups this week, um, you know. But yeah, I mean, Fields against Denver is probably a good call. But you said that one, Bobby, right? Sixty six hundred. Mm -hmm. He's projecting well. Anthony Richardson looked really good too when he was playing. He rushed touchdowns. I mean, I like that play a lot against the Rams. He's going to probably be scrambling a little bit if he's in. Um, and I'm I'm probably going to go a little tighter with my stacks this week. So like I'm I'm probably gonna stick to some of these top stacks. I seem to be trying like late the last few weeks I've been getting off the Tua like when he's all these good like Herbert. I'm a huge Chargers fan, right? But I didn't. I felt like I should have been on them more last week, and they were good spots. And I was like, I'm always on them. So like I kind of spread out to some of these cheaper guys, and it kind of hurt me a little bit because I would have been able to play some of these other guys a little bit more Tua's and Herberts over some of these cheaper quarterbacks. I kind of was real spread out last week. And I think this week I'm going to try to tighten up my my plays this week a lot more than I am. Yeah, no, it makes a lot of sense. It, but I do think that using we, we have seen some success early in the season for some of these cheap quarterbacks, and you, then using the game stacks, uh, you know, elsewhere like a skinny stack. Uh, Jared Goff, I believe, won the million last week. Is that I'm pretty sure that's right in the the twenty dollar million. Um, and if you, if you wanted a candidate for that this week, maybe, maybe you could take a cheap shot. I mentioned Russell Wilson, but maybe a cheap shot on Kenny Pickett or Brock Purdy as really uh, cheap options that, that definitely have some upside to get there. So I wouldn't mind using those guys. Yeah, I did have a Jared Goff last week too, but I didn't win a million 
Bobby. <laughs> it's too bad. I had him in my wildcat lineup, actually. I just did, like oh, I said, really? I've had a lot of, the, I had Keenan Allen in that lineup. I had some other pieces in that lineup. I just, is just, just not all, I got high score, but it like, you know, just meant barely out of the cash line. I just didn't have, a, I had a lot of duds. This is, yeah. Yeah, I, I can I can relate. Um, even when I didn't have duds, I had scores like two forties and stuff like that. And I was heavy, so I got so heavy on that Miami passing game attack that actually the running game kind of like hurt me. You know what I mean? I actually got off of most dirt some so I could get more of Miami offense in. <laughs> it just didn't quite work out the right way. Anyway, we'll move over to running back. You have a lot of interesting uh, value to consider this week. We don't know, <laughs> and before you say I'm recommending him, I probably will again and just beat my head against the wall with the, the Kelly thing. If we do for sure lose Eckler, I saw that he was out just like 10 minutes ago. I don't know how accurate that is. I'm going to hold off and just get, wait for official word before I commit to anything with it, with that side of things. But that is potentially, sadly, another, another, another guy who was cost of the fortune. And uh, we might, we might use again a little bit this week. I'm going to use, so I like his in, in all different price tiers this week. Um, I like Kyron Williams. Uh, I like, uh, who did I have? I have Derrick Henry, uh, just because I think he'll be like very, very low on and he's getting to that cheap point. Jacobs, who fits into that that Vegas uh Charger stack, I think he's gonna be pretty popular. Eckler or Kelly, whoever plays, it's a good matchup for either of them. Um Pollard, and then I'm using like some I don't really want to use the Miles Sanders things. I think I'm okay taking a shot to go back at Madison. Uh James Cook in the stacks. And then I'm going to use a little bit of Khalil Herbert, not just in the stacks, but he's 4,700 and just allows you to get some flexibility elsewhere. So probably mostly going to be spending down, but I did want to highlight those other guys. I am having a hard time getting to McCaffrey. I'm having a hard time, you know, if, if I get up, it's probably going to be Pollard, Eckler, Jacobs, Henry, and probably just that level just beneath McCaffrey for me. So most mostly, though, it's going to be the guys in the five the, the 4,700 to, to 6,300 range is, is where I'm mostly most heavy. Yeah. That's kind of where I've been staying heavier at too, you know, and that's a, um, really good, good range to stay at. Sorry. I got, I just pulled the game up and Packers just got a pick. So already we're, we're already in the red zone. So here comes the running backs. So <laughs> that's where we're at. So we're on running back. So I like the Pollard call McCaffrey is 9,200. I haven't been getting there, but obviously he's elite. He scored a touchdown. I think he's got some like 11 game or 12 game record or something going crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, for scoring a touchdown. If I heard somebody bet, if you bet $100 on McCaffrey 12 games ago and bet him to score a touchdown every game and just kept rolling it over, that 100 bucks would have been 78000 That's crazy. It was like some 11-game scoring streak or something. Yeah, I just yeah, I've seen, no, I've seen it, so it's crazy. So, yeah, but he's he's very priced up. But um, I, I really like the call on Jacobs. I think he's going to be a good run back in that Chargers game. Obviously, he's probably going to carry some ownership there. Um. We got him at like, yeah, he's pretty high owned, but I really, I, I think a, a guy I might go back to this week is also that Alexander Madison. I know Carolina's got an interesting um, run defense, but I, I think he's going to have a breakout game one of these days. I like that. Swift mm -hmm. at 5,700, another player that I like is going to be a little bit chalky, um, you know, so. Um, we got Ford here again at 5,400, questionable. I really hope Eckler does play, but it makes sense for him not to play this week. Just because um, they have a bye next week, so you technically get two games off, two more games off to rest. And, yeah. And, and, the problem and, is they're, they're they're looking at one and three, but at the same time, it's that if there's a matchup, they like you hate to say it, but they should win. It'd be this one. But the problem with the Chargers, we know every game is going to be like within four points anyway. Right? Yeah, they just seem to blow every game. It's just getting ridiculous at this time. <laughs> it's where they crazy. Blow game and then they come back and win at the end. It's just mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just nuts right now. You know so. Um, with them, yeah, and I like your Derrick Henry call at seven K. I mean, he he's getting not a lot of snaps. I think people will be off him. Look at this ownership's very low. Um, he, you know, um, you know, a lot lower here. So that's a good call. You know, so I'm definitely going to be in the same range on some of these guys that are maybe having a bounce back week or bounce back, haven't had a game all season. You know, yet. So, um, yeah. So we'll see what happens. Um, kind of, kind of gonna I mix and match my running backs up with my stacks. I use a lot of run backs, like I said, in my stacks with running backs. Um, I do a lot of RB to receiver correlations. So, you know, if I like Miles Sanders, maybe I'll play Justin Jefferson. If I play Madison, maybe I'll play Adam Thielen or something crazy, you know, just, just some weird stuff in there. So, mm -hmm. all right. Yeah. Uh, 
You want to move on to receiver? Yeah, we'll go, we'll go over to receiver, and, and it's going to be like I'm just looking at it through ownership, and the good news is that I probably am going to be beneath the field on a good portion of the spend-ups outside of Keenan Allen and Devontae Adams. I will probably be under on Puka. I will probably – I'll be oh, – oh, and Tyreek Hay, I'll be over on. Uh, I will be under probably slightly on Jac- Jacoby Myers. I will probably be under on Tank Dell, even though I like the kid. Um, I'm definitely going to be over on Diggs. And I'm definitely going to be over on Gabe Davis. Obviously, same same game thing there. I think we 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 got a little lesson of what's happening. Like Joe Burrow really can't seem to get back to pass, and now he's past, playing a pass funnel defense. I would like to get some Tyler Boyd as a cheap option this week. Um, I could see him as being a real, a really, really good in PPR, uh, which obviously DraftKings is. Mm-hmm. Um, who I'm looking at who else, who else I have uh, here. Um, oh, and then you've got the uh, the. The Palmer or Johnston, Quentin Johnston or Josh Palmer for the for the Rams. Both of them, I'm sorry for the for the Chargers. Chargers. Both of them have have the upside and should get enough snaps to have a chance. Um, I thought I thought Kelly would look like the uh, be- I'm sorry Palmer would be look like the better one, um, but I think it's going to be jo- I think Johnston and Palmer are both really close. So that's mostly what I'm doing, but it's mostly going to be in those the Miami Buffalo uh, Vegas Chargers. And then I'm going to force in some DJ Moore and Cortland Sutton because I like that other game. Yeah, I really, I really like those calls. I mean, obviously, I like these Charger cheap guys. I think it's going to give us a lot of options. Um, I, you know, Gabe Davis, a great call. I've I've always liked him again in Buffalo. I feel like he's going to have a big big game soon. I like the call on Tyler Boyd. I had him captain the other night too, and it started out so great. He caught like three passes off the rip. Higgins was dropping everything. Boyd's catching him, and then they start playing defense on uh, Tyler Boyd. And he couldn't get the ball. They were forcing it to him, and he couldn't do much. And I fell out of the top of the. I was up to like fifteenth place at one time in the two. I was getting excited for you there for a minute last week. Yeah, I mean Boyd was looking good. I, I just was clicking on all things, and then mixing scores, and that screwed up the whole lineup. Yeah, so. You know, like we were close, but you know that's where we do. We take these little, little cheap guys. We like the captain, and it helps build a lineup around him. You know, mm-hmm. so yeah, I like I like the Palmer call. Keenan Allen's going to be a lot chalky. He's clearly the number. One. I mean, he's catching massive amount of volume, mm-hmm. um, huge volume. It might be even hard to fade him in some stuff. Um, Josh Downs price didn't go down any. He, he's another guy here. I'm sorting kind of by some value right now. You can see Keenan Allen's way up here, even at his price tag for value because his usage. Yeah. Um, crazy. You know, I do like the Jacoby Myers. I know you said you weren't on it as much. If he doesn't get that much ownership, if it comes down a little bit, yeah, maybe, maybe I like it. He's getting a lot more usage here than he has been in the past and he looks good getting it. Um, I know Devontae Adams is good, but, I mean, he's at 8,000 versus 5,500, and Jacoby scored the two touchdowns, went out on an injury. Everyone forgot about him, and he had a decent showdown the other night or, yeah. or that, you know, game. So I really yeah. like that. Go ahead. Keep going. Sorry. And let's just sort by some other good players here. You know, it just ends up kind of in the stacks that I want, you know, just the same game stacks. You know, Waddle might be a guy coming back. Look at the low ownership. Um, I, I might be, a, he's a little pricey, but this could be a spot where you could just grab him instead of Hill this week. And he could be a run back in the stack. It'd be a little expensive stack there, Buffalo, Miami, but that's going to be a big shootout game. And just think of it as the Vikings chargers last week where guys got, you needed a guy that uh, Waddle could score 40 points too, you know? So absolutely. Just, just mix and match those games. If he's going to be this low owned coming off an injury unknown, you know, these are guys I want, you know, in my lineup. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I, I, I like all that. I wanted to throw out a couple of things. I, I, first of all, I do like Jacoby Myers. The only reason I said I'd be under would, was because I, there are pivots in his price range that might that are like projected to be like a quarter as owned as he is. Um, like guys like, or, or half as owned in the case of George Pickens, who I like a lot at 5,400. Um, uh, you have other guys in the uh, Cortland Sutton at 5,300 will be a quarter as owned. Uh, Nico Collins. I just feel like maybe, even though I'm stacking up that game, Maybe I can find some other plays because I just think it's going to be very condensed for people who are playing those games with how they do it. So if you can, if you do play him, maybe having another guy like a Cortland Sutton or a Nico Collins in that lineup at you know similar price range, much George Pickens, much lower ownership, just a way of differentiating your build a little. But I think it's always interesting to talk about. Chiefs and I talk about it a lot, but um, yeah, differentiating build. People tend to not play the guys in the exact same price at the same position very often. And, you know, for the most part. 
No, I definitely, I definitely like that call there too. And, and I mean, you even got you didn't say that, but you got Mike Thomas there too. Yeah, he mm-hmm. didn't have a great game last game. The Saints really didn't, but they're playing Tampa Bay. It's been a faster pace a little bit, so maybe, maybe um, they get back to it and a little bit more score in Tampa Bay this week. So um, another price guy right there. So yeah, I definitely like that. Uh, what Bobby was talking about there, doing that, doing that. Yep. Um, all right. Well, let's move over to uh, to tight ends and and. Uh... This so some of the tight some of my favorite tight ends are playing tonight, and, and I have a very <laughs> I, I went through all the tight ends, and I really want to spend down a tight end, and I don't feel in tight the one I feel the most comfortable with is going to be the most chalky, and that's Friar Most, and even that I don't feel that comfortable with. I think this might be it, where I can afford it. I would love to get up to a Goddard play at forty four hundred. You know what I mean? I'd love to get up. To, I think this is a good matchup for George Kittle to have. I feel like one of those San Francisco guys breaks out and has a monster game here outside of McCaffrey, and maybe it's Samuel again, maybe it's Kittle. But I, I feel like Kittle has a couple every year, and Arizona has always been bad at covering the middle. So if I could spend up a little bit, I would play Kittle. But these cheap options are really rough this week. I mean, Fryermuth, and then you've got both Bills guys, both Kincaid and Knox will be in my pool, as will uh, Durham Smythe on the other end because I'm going to be heavily stacking that game. But that's really the reason why I'm playing them. I don't want, love them on their own. I don't love a Conquo, but I'll, I'll probably have some of them. I don't love Zach Ertz. I'll probably have some of them. I don't love the tight end position. I don't find a lot of value that I feel excited about outside of Friar Ruth, which is the one that everyone feels excited about. Even Dalton Schultz is getting all this love right now, uh, projection-wise. And Dalton Schultz has like three catches on the year for like 10 yards. You know what I mean? So it's just nothing to be that excited about for tight end unless you're spending up. And if I was spending up, I actually like the idea of getting weird with the Kittle. Uh, you also do have Mark Andrews against Cleveland and when they might really need him at 5,400, which is way too cheap for Mark Andrews in general. But uh, I, I, I want to spend down and I'm having, because I'm having a hard time with, you know, I'm trying to play Waddle Hill and Diggs and all these guys. So I'm trying to spend down, but I don't love the spend down option. So I'm probably going to stay with the, the Dawson Knoxes, the Durham Smites, the, uh, the 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 Kincaids and uh, the Friar are, are my main ones right now. Yeah, one of your uh, favorite tight ends just had a huge catch down the middle. So uh, yeah, I wish we had some <laughs> show, all the show. Uh, Laporta had a big catch. Oh wait, was that Brock? Right? No, that's Laporta. Oh, uh, yeah, would have been nice to huh? Thirty to forty yards down the middle. He, Love uh, it. Def- defender tried to jump the route, grab the ball, fell down, couldn't tackle him, and Laporta gained about another twenty. Love to see that. Yeah, so yeah, like I said, there's not a lot for tight ends here for the slate. I mean, you got no, you know, Kelsey, Laporta, Musgrave. You got a lot of guys. Uh, St. Brown just scored a touchdown. So, but yeah, we got a big, you know, a, a bigger slate here this week, but we just don't have the tight ends. Like, I, I think the guy at call you had was awesome. At 4,400, I think his usage is just going to go up. I know there's a lot of mouths to feed over there, mm-hmm. but like, and that's just a great price on him. I think he's an elite tight end. Um, yep. Same with Kincaid. I think he's going to be one of those rookies we watch. He's similar to Laporta, Musgrave. Some of these rookie tight ends that we keep we keep rostering. I think he, at thirty two hundred, he's elite. Fryermuth was a uh, you know a rookie what last year, right? Um, two years ago, maybe what? two years ago. Fryermuth. Fryermuth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple years. He, he's young guy still. And, yeah. and he's still priced 3400 and he's the guy for Pitt, you know, against Houston that's playing fast. You know, this game could be a good shootout. He could be a great run back if you're playing like the Nico Collins, Tank Dell, you know, some of those other options too, you know, do a little run back, mini run back. But you're right, no one's going to play Andrews. The ownership's pretty low. You got Hawkinson up here, you know, as well. It's a couple higher. I mean, he's really high priced. I mean, no one's going to play that guy. If you are if you want to play some of these chalk stacks, throw Maybe that high price tight game. end. You're gonna definitely get yourself different. Throw Miles Sanders with a run back of Hawkinson in this game, and hopefully they nuke in a in a large field or something. And then you got the chalk stack to go with them, and then the two low pieces. So maybe maybe this week. I mean, as you say that, like maybe I need to change a little bit my builds and try to force in the spend ups because Hawkinson's overpriced, which will keep him unowned. But yeah, Andrews and Kittle, I think both have tremendous upside, especially Andrews at this price. Maybe I try to find a way to squeeze the extra stuff in there and maybe squeeze in our guy Goddard too or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't mind that. I think that's a, a, a good approach. Is just I always try to flip the builds a little bit from if everyone's playing the cheap tight ends and you really think about playing, you know, Hawkinson at a higher tight end or one of the Andrews a little bit higher even is not getting owned. So, yeah, it's definitely a good idea to flip the build a little bit. But 
we don't have that many tight ends. There's only really one or two you're priced up, and then the rest of these guys are pretty close. So mm-hmm. it's definitely going to be – it might even be a little more spread out by Sunday than you, than we think here. A lot of these guys are on some of these plays here, like Fryermuth and Schultz. I mean, Schultz, everyone just thinks he's going to keep having a big game, but, I mean, like, he's not looked great. He's not getting a lot of catches. Tank Dell's been getting a lot of work. Nico's getting a lot of work. So they're spreading it out a little. Damien Pierce got a touchdown. So, you know, may, mm-hmm. maybe he has a two-touchdown game soon and you want to pl- get there early. But if he stays low on, I don't mind it. But if he starts to get higher on, I'm, I'm kind of on these other guys that they're at the same price range that I really like. Yeah, and it's interesting because, I mean, the thing with Schultz, what's what's alarming about him getting nothing done so far, first of all, you have Pittsburgh also who blitzes, so you're going to need your tight end to block a lot. That's going to be tough. Um, the other part is, you have you have you have a quarterback who's going nuts every. I mean, Stroud is th- is the is the third quarterback of all time to have, to throw for over 900 yards in his first three games, um, and yet none of the work's going to Schultz. So even when they're they're successfully completing everywhere, it's going elsewhere, which has got to just keep you know got to raise alarm bells a little bit if he gets high on. Now again, when he's if he if, if the ownership is sub is like four or five percent, fine, we'll play him anyway. But if it's if it gets to double digits for any reason, that's when I sort of want to just like say you know what. I don't. I don't need to mess with something that looks like it's not not happening. I don't need to try and force it and make it a thing. Yeah. All right, we can jump over to defenses, which I think again, this is partly the problem I'm having. It's a great. It's a week I really want to stack up that Buffalo Miami game, so I need some value, and we don't have glaring value. What I'm going to probably end up doing is running a, a very. <laughs> I'm going to end up playing a lot of Arizona this week. Uh, I, I look. Purdy's been good. They run simple stuff for him. Occasionally, he'll throw the ball off his back foot, and I just feel like I was begging for a pick six one of these days. So I'll, I'll take a gamble on the Arizona defense as a, as a cheap option because I, I really need to save some money. And you can see it's funny because even if you sort by value, Arizona still shows up as the third worst value on the slate. I also will take some shots on the on the Raiders defense um, at 2300 because, again, I need the money. I need the savings. Uh, I, it, where I'm not playing the Buffalo Miami game, I don't mind Buffalo at 2700. Just to take a shot, you know, you, you get one mistake play. It's, it's really not asked that much. I just don't want to pay 4Ks for my defense because I like some of these spend up defenses, but I just can't bring myself to do it. The Browns against Baltimore at 2800 makes some sense. I like the Colts a little bit against my Rams 2900. Uh, but maybe my favorite, saved for last, I will always take the cheap defense against Kirk Cousins. Because he takes more sacks, the team has, has turned the ball over more than anybody in football, and he can't handle any pressure, which the Panthers can create some. So I like the Carolina defense to be my number one defense this week. Yeah, I kind of locked in. I just felt really good last week about the Bills defense, and I kind of locked them. Not locked them. I played all defenses, but like I really just getting more of them in those cheap, that cheap range. This week, definitely, I like your call on the Panthers' defense at 2,500. You just kind of find one of those gems, hope it goes off a little bit, you know, because obviously you could take a shot at Arizona, but San Francisco could also score 40. Take a shot at the Raiders, Chargers could score 40, you know, so you could hurt yourself a little bit there. Um, same with Washington's defense. Philly could score 40, you know. So you're you're more right about on any of these, these last four cheap defenses – Kirk Cousins gonna throw a pick six or the fumble the ball or something, you know. So, yep. like most likely, that's the cheap defense you want to get, and the ownership doesn't isn't that high already on those, and you know, so people are gonna spread it out on defense a lot. So, I think that's the play. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I like. I really, I really feel comfortable. I, I, not comfortable. I just feel good about the idea of, of doing that. Also, people hate playing defenses against teams that put up a lot of points and, and numbers. And it just really couldn't be further from the, the truth of, of how you sh- people should look at things. I think the Chargers defense last week was like two tenths of a percentage point owned. And what did they force? Five turnovers. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and, and, and had three sacks on top of it, I think. So, uh, that's the 13 fantasy points for those of you guys who can't add. Anyway. Um, <laughs> anyway. So, so, so getting into the games, I, I'm very heavily concentrated Miami, Buffalo, Vegas, uh, Chargers. And then my third get weird one is the Denver Chicago game. What's what's appealing to you this week? Well, everyone knows what game I'm going to be on, but so you know, looking at looking at some of these other game totals, you know, Den- I'm surprised Denver's got a 25 point total. They look terrible. Um so Chicago yeah. <laughs> those defenses are so bad. Yeah, that's true. Uh they are so bad. So that might be a game I get a little bit more of thinking about it. I just man, Denver 
Something looks good, you know, but the defenses are bad. Um, another game that I might get a little bit of, I really like Thomas and I really like Alave. Godwin and Evans are good. Maybe this game goes over. I take I, my hot take of the week. Maybe the, the Bucks game goes a little bit over. I know Saints okay. defense is a little decent, but you know, they're, they're going to throw Evans looks pretty good. And, you know, Godwin's got to get involved a little bit more and I think they will be fine. Rashad white hasn't ran anything, you know, that great, but he's getting some dump off work. That might be a game I'd like. And then maybe a game I want to get a little bit more of is this Colts Rams game. Again, a lot of these Rams players been breaking the slate for everybody at their value. I do like Richardson running a little bit. I mean, they're going to bring pressure on the Rams, but I think he's going to be able to scramble a little bit and probably get a run or two. Hopefully, we got injuries. Check back on Sunday, guys, when we go live. Um, yeah. We'll talk about all these injuries. We'll see if Eckler's in, Anthony Richardson. There's a lot of receivers questionable here. Devontae Smith, Waddle, Hopkins, Jerry, Judy. That These guys will make decisions on the slate. You know, Judy's out. Sutton will be a lot more chalky. You know, Marquise Brown being out even gives maybe some bumps to some value players on Arizona. So just mm-hmm. uh, check back with us at 11 o'clock on Sunday, guys, and then uh, we'll have more hot takes, I'm sure, and uh, get up-to-date injury news on the on the slate. So uh, mm-hmm. it's going to be a fun one. I think might be, I might be spreading it out a little bit, um, but not as much as I did last week. I think I'm going to get concentrated on some of these games that I like more. Nice. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do my little uh, little little brief. You don't have to say a crazy one or whatever. But my, my my hot take, which is not that hot of a take, I don't think, is that that there will be three players from the Miami Buffalo game in the winning lineup. Ooh. And my 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 hotter take is that Javante Williams will be in the winning lineup. Well, I like that play. That's a good hot take. I actually like that one. I think he's got a real shot at you know like you got Chicago defense. Why not? Yeah, I was I was high up on him in the beginning of the year too, and for best ball. So like, people aren't drafting him as much. So like, at fifty five hundred, Chicago defense is terrible. I think you can really run. He's going to be a little chalky this week, it looks like. But I definitely think that's a really good good take. I, I like that one. Nice. Um, all right. Any anything uh, anything you want to leave us with before we get out of here? <clears throat> uh, I'm just trying to think if I got anything juicy. You could, you, could, you could do a teaser. We could just say, wait till 11 on Sunday, and then Rody's going to be pissed on Sunday when we, when we ask him for his hot take. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, dude. That's a good one. That is a good one. Oh, man. Oh, I had a good hot take. I think this Bucks saints game goes over. Michael Thomas has a good game, 25-plus. Oh, I love that. Okay, I'm actually, I am actually had Thomas as a fringy one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to include more Thomas. I was actually already thinking about that. I want to look a little deep, deeper into that one. Yeah, I think that's going to be a good play for him. So I know, we're, <laughs> well, people are not going to be high on that game. We got Jameis Winston, right? Because Carr is going to be, Carr, how long is Carr out for? Carr is, I don't know how much longer he's out, but Jameis will be in, Jameis will be in there this week. Yeah, so, you know, he's had some chemistry with, with uh, you know, Mike Thomas. So I think. They're going to be chucking it, so I, I think the two receivers are going to be a good stack there. To be honest with you, um, I he don't just maybe miss one giant play that that's probably that seems like overpriced. That might be a really good play because Jameis is quarterback. Is Taysom Hill a better play this week? Maybe. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's been tight end a lot of the third down work anyway as quarterback. You got to play him at tight end still, right? Yeah, he's forty five hundred, which is too expensive. But yeah. if they if, if you get a couple of third down, you know. You know, near the goal line, you might you might get two two rushing touchdowns out of the guy. Yeah, I mean, you could even play Taysom and Mike Thomas or something weird. You know, you that's get, interesting. You get some weird stuff with that. I didn't think about because he'll run one in too. Yeah, um, and he might get a little bit more work now too that Jameis is in. So I think there's not not going to be a lot of people on that game, and I think he could score. So we got to be, you know, we got to. We gotta think about everything when we're play- building lineups, and make sure you get a little bit of that. I think uh, don't go overboard on it, but I think that might be my hot take that goes over. It's a low total, so I, I feel like it could go over. I like it. All right, buddy. Well, it's always great doing the show with you. Before they kick us out on on on, uh, on, on the Zoom, why don't oh, you? Yeah, we are really low on time. Here. I didn't even see that. We're out on a four minutes, so <laughs> so take us out of here, and uh, and then uh, hope we'll see you guys eleven on Sunday. Yeah, see you guys at 11 on Sunday. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, let's get it.